A baby goat, also known as a kid, is born through a process called kidding. It can be challenging to tell if a goat is pregnant as they carry most of their weight in the middle. However, as they get closer to giving birth, you may notice the goat's vulva dropping. A goat is pregnant for about 150 days or about 5 months. As the goat gets closer to birthing, the vulva goes from being in a normal position to pointing down. The mama goat, or doe, will need good food and care to be healthy for delivery. The baby goat is born without any teeth, and their first teeth start to come through once they are about one week old. Baby goats nurse from the time they're born until they reach about two and a half months old. Goats are also herbivores, so they only eat plants and vegetation once they've been fully weaned. However, they start lightly grazing in the grass with their herd around 2 to 3 weeks of age. Baby goat's weight can range from 4 to 12 pounds at birth. By the time they are 2 months old, they weigh 30 to 50 pounds. Full-grown female goats, or nannies, will grow to weigh about 110 to 180 pounds. But a full-grown male goat, or a billy, will reach anywhere from 140 to 200 pounds. If a goat is being raised on a farm or domestically it will almost always choose to give birth in a sheltered, dry area. Here is a typical dairy goat farm by Pinnacle AG in New Zealand. Imagine lush, rolling hills draped in verdant pastures, a hallmark of the New Zealand landscape. This provides a natural and healthy environment for the goats to graze. New Zealand is known for its high-quality goat breeds, and Pinnacle AG emphasizes the use of superior genetics in their partner farms. This ensures the goats are well-suited for milk production. Pinnacle AG NZ works in partnership with Animal Breeding Services and Elite Goat Genetics. They also highlights the importance of animal welfare on their farms. This translates to providing the goats with proper nutrition, comfortable housing, and veterinary care to ensure their health and well-being. Modern milking parlors are likely used, such as the Rapid Exit, Herringbone or Rotary milking systems, allowing efficient milking of large herds, 300 to 400 goats per hour. Predominantly forage-based diet. The goats primarily feed on fresh grasses, clover, lucerne, and hay, promoting a natural and sustainable farming practice. While focusing on forages, the goats might also receive supplemental feeds like maize, canola, peas, and barley to ensure they get all the necessary nutrients for milk production. Pinnacle AG emphasizes the use of locally sourced, non-GMO feeds and avoids waste products, reflecting a commitment to sustainable farming practices. The Dutch Lack Goat Milking Parlor by Van der Ploeg International BV is a robust and maintenance-friendly milking system. The milking parlors are equipped with heavy steel structures made from thick galvanized steel, robust milk cloths, and durable components for easy maintenance at low costs. Dutch Lack produces three different milking systems, which can be made according to customer specifications. These include the side-by-side -side rapid exit system, herringbone system, and carousel system. On large farms, where they work with different groups of milkers, it's crucial to collect all the information from the cows during milking. Standard offerings include automatic identification, milk recording, conductivity measurement, and heat detection integrated into the Dutch LAC management program. Optional features include sorting gates that select cows in need of treatment and a special backing gate to gently push the cows to the milking parlor. Milking parlors offer several benefits, particularly in terms of efficiency, productivity, and animal welfare. A well-run milking parlor can have a high throughput and maximize labor usage. This means more cows can be milked in less time, which can increase the overall productivity of the farm. Efficient labor in a calm environment stimulates milk flow and even production, which can lead to improved milk quality. A clean, calm, and well-lit parlor can create a comfortable environment for the cows, which can stimulate milk letdown and reduce potential teat damage. By increasing output while reducing labor, milking parlors can make farming more profitable. Some milking parlors are designed to promote better udder health and typically increase milk yield by about 5%.
Sheep farming is among the traditional business and occupations of the people of some countries around the world. Sheep have been rearing as a domestic animal from the ancient time. Usually sheep farming means rearing sheep commercially for the purpose of meat, milk, and wool production. Although sheep farming for commercial milk production is not a good decision. Sheep are suitable for meat and wool production. If you have proper facilities, then you can raise sheep in both small and large scale. Commercial sheep farming business is very profitable and you will get your investment back within a very short period. Sheep farming can be done on both small and large scales, depending on the facilities available. It's a profitable business and the investment can be recouped within a short period. However, it requires proper planning, management, and care for the flock, including understanding breeding and genetics, providing proper nutrition, preventing diseases, and managing grazing. In terms of manufacturing goods, the industry not only generates income for farmers but also creates employment opportunities throughout the value chain, from shearing and processing wool to marketing and exporting sheep products. Most people know that wool comes from sheep, but how it transforms from a sheep's fluffy coat to material that's ready to be worn is a journey. Every year, at the end of winter, sheep farmers shear their sheep, using an electric tool similar to a razor that removes all of the sheep's fleece in one piece. A single sheep's annual fleece can weigh over 8 kilos, although most are around 3 to 4 kilograms. When done with care, shearing doesn't harm the sheep, a key priority of our wool vendors at Babak. A simple step of washing the wool with removes dirt, other contaminants, and natural oils from the wool. Next, the wool fibers go through carding, a process that pulls them through fine metal teeth. Sheep wool is naturally curly, carding straightens out the fibers and makes them soft and fluffy. Originally, carding would be done by hand using two metal combs. By the end of carding, the wool fibers are lined up into a thin, flat piece. These sheets can then be drawn into long, thin pieces called rovings. Spinning turns the wool pieces into a material that's usable. Spinning uses a wheel to spin two to five strands of wool together. This forms long, strong pieces of wool that you would recognize as yarn. Different processes create different kinds of yarn that work for distinct final products. Some wool yarn is sold directly to consumers, who use it to craft handmade scarves, sweaters, and other clothing. Other yarn forms the raw material for all kinds of wool products, from shoes to coats. It's woven into pieces of fabric that are ready to be shaped by fashion designers. Wool quickly absorbs water, which makes it very easy to dye. It can be dyed at almost any stage of the process, depending on what the final product will be. Simply submerging the wool into boiling water with the dye material, or applying colorful dyes directly to the fabric, produces the desired color. There are two main methods for constructing wool carpets. The first one is weaving. This traditional technique involves interlacing the yarn vertically, warp, and horizontally, weft, on a loom, creating a strong and durable carpet with intricate patterns. The second method is tufting. This method involves punching the wool yarn through a pre-woven backing fabric, creating loops or cut piles. Tufted carpets are generally faster and more cost-effective to produce, but they might not be as intricate or durable as woven carpets. After construction, the carpet surface is evenly sheared to achieve a uniform pile height and a smooth finish. A secondary backing material is applied for additional stability and to prevent fraying. The edges are then bound with fabric or other materials to enhance the carpet's appearance and durability. Finally, the finished carpet undergoes thorough inspection to ensure it meets quality standards before being packaged and distributed. <laughs>